good, you can see Smirty Bush Square back in the Nerf video. What you're seeing on the screen is, in my opinion, one of the best budget decks of the format. Yes, I realize this format is actually very, very expensive. We have decks like Snake Eyes, the Voiceless Voice, even other decks like Branded are actually quite expensive with cards like Quem, the Guardian Chimera, the Sanctifier Dragon. All these cards actually add up to some amount of value. And after drawing some inspiration from Master Duel, I was digging around with different archetypes that I think are actually viable in the format. Sword Soul doesn't seem that bad. I mean, yeah, guys, look at this. So Sword Soul, how this deck works is obviously it was previously a tier one deck, so you guys probably all remember, but it's very much a control deck that can also tap into some combos, making use of the worms and going in a powerful plethora of monsters in the extra deck, namely their built-in engine card, Sword Soul Grandmaster Chishao who when Synchro Summon allows you to add to your hand or banish the Sword Soul card from your deck more than often than not adding the Sword Soul card to your hand. And then from there, you can also banish a Worm Monster from your graveyard or your hand to negate a monster effect during your opponent's turn. So it kind of has some nice effects here. It's a disruption, but it also is somewhat of a starter slash a uh, engine requirement piece that allows you to just start playing. And then we can easily back that up with a Baron de Fleur and set something like a Summon Limit, have like a Floodgate. It just puts up very oppressive boards. The deck is very, very much future-proof because you can play a lot of non-engine cards in this deck, despite the deck having one critical weakness, which is the fact that it does not really have any traditional one-card starters. Basically, every uh, starter in this deck requires another card, so you kind of do need two cards or 1.5 cards to even try and playing. So that's I think the main critical drawback of this deck, but that being said, it has so many different combinations of multiple cards you can just start with. Even the 10 stuff, you can just start with this and somewhat have a chance at playing. So the deck actually has some really nice application when you splash in a bunch of hand traps, slow down your opponent going second, and then either break their board or mount some sort of monster, like even one cheese shell with a bunch of hand traps, oftentimes that's just enough. Now, more importantly, one thing that I realized in this deck specifically that's ultra ultra broken is the fact that you can play three pot of desires one of the best cards in this game's history period not even just like a draw card but one of the best strongest cards ever printed that allows you to draw two cards with basically no drawback it's a pot of greed that says banish 10 cards for cost but if you look at this deck it just plays so many multiples we do not care about banishing cards and if you guys have inspected the format closely you will realize that this card has actually not seen play in a long time pot of desires is not currently playable in any of the existing meta tier one or tier two decks because everything requires like you know uh one ofs in the deck or a lot of engine pieces that you just cannot afford to banish so this is one of the only decks that can actually play this card and now that this card is finally at three this means that this deck gets a huge boost especially when you play a lot of hand traps because you're going neg one every time you drop a hand trap right so being able to replenish your resources of pot of desires on top of digging for engine because this car uh, deck does require multiple engine pieces to play it's just one of the most powerful cards i think it's absolutely crazy in this deck specifically and the fact that it's at three makes me want to play this deck uh more than anything in terms of budget I just wanted to announce that we have officially launched the Squiddy Store! Yep, if you guys want some Squiddy-tastic merch, check the link in the description, squiddytastic.com. These are all hand-drawn t-shirts that I actually hand-drew myself. Yeah, I have some uh, subtle experience drawing cartoons here and there. But we have three designs so far, so guys, definitely check them out. They come in a lot of different colors and sizes, but we will actually have some more designs coming quickly along the way, so stay tuned for some uh, of your favorite creatures from the history of the game. And yeah, other than that, guys, just give us a quick look if you like some uh, exciting merch to level up your game and also look kind of trendy at your next event. But yeah, let's jump back to today's Squidio. Now next is the fact that, you know, a lot of these cards have been reprinted, so it's very, very accessible. Uh, I don't think any of these cards are really over $10. And there are a couple of things that you can do to make this deck even cheaper than it already is. For example, he's here in the side deck, we're playing Druus Worm, which is around nine or $10. You could definitely try playing something like a Sarner. It doesn't really matter that much. Obviously the send effect is quite nice, but in the grand scheme of things, if you're starting out and you're more of a budget player, dipping your toes back into the game, it doesn't really matter if Druus Worm is something like a Sarner or uh, yeah, I guess Sarner, you know, one of the other names. Cause you want different names so you can uh, use two effects at once if you draw both of the cards whereas if you draw two you just can't use them because they're once per turn so yeah digging a little deeper we're playing multiple non-engine you guys will see here three ash three valor three ghost mourner three nib three imperm and then two ghost bell this 
means that we actually have a whopping 17 non-engine hand traps in the deck, which gives us about a 72% chance to see two or more hand traps. Obviously in the format like this where Snake Eyes is so dominant, you just have to see multiple hand traps. It's really, really important, which is why we're maxing out on those. And then the other thing that you might realize is, um, obviously we're playing three Ash, three Valor, three Imperm, three Nib, which is the four best hand traps in my opinion to main deck right now. And then the fifth best one in my opinion is Ghost Mourner Moonlit Shield. This one interacts very favorably with Black Witch. And if you guys have known about Snake Eyes, this deck bricks a lot, the Snake Eyes deck. They have about 13 real starters in the form of three Bonfire, three Witch, three Wanted, and three Ash. And one for one, if you consider that even. So they don't really have a lot of ways to play. The deck does break occasionally. Occasionally, they only have one starter. If you have one Ghost Mourner, you just stop the Witch and half the time, they just pass their turn. Now, it's a little worse when they start off with the Ash, obviously, because the only thing that you can hit is a Poplar, being the fact that the critical drawback of this card, you can only hit special summon monsters, but that doesn't matter. Another thing that we're really hedging on is drawing two or more hand traps. So we do have the Mourner plus like a Baylor, for example, even if they start with Snake Eyes Ash and then have the Witch as a follow-up after we Baylor, we can hit that again with the Ghost Mourner, which prevents them from starting to dig into their deck and playing, right? So that's, I think, the major point. I wanted to fit in more non engine but I think it's really, really hard without actually sacrificing consistency because, again, we do need a high worm count to reveal for Moye. Moye has to reveal worm to spend some of the tokens, so that's why, uh, in my opinion, I'm not sure if we can go any further. I could definitely see some debate for cutting down maybe some of the tenies, but I think these cards are just so, so good. Um, yeah, two Ecclesia. I don't think this card is that great if you consider uh well i mean it's a good card but like it's better going second so i could definitely see playing a third copy but i really wanted to fit in more non-engine so i uh, cut it to two it's just not that great opening multiples of uh one taya this is a bit controversial for you sword so fanatics out there but in my opinion it's always been just correct to play one this is not the card you want to start with it's obviously a one card playable card slash starter if you have a graveyard but again it requires setup and you just do not want to see this card in your hand this is the type of card in your deck you want to see later on you can just dig for and use it in turn two or turn three in the grind game you have a chance of banishing it with pot of desires but it doesn't matter if this card's gone it doesn't compromise your chances of winning like you're still going to be able to win with the rest of your cards and i'm resolved desires this game which makes me already ahead right so uh, honestly just do not play more of this card three long on it's the generic extender and then the tenny engine i just wanted to max out on the good one which is ashina as well as uh, playing two copies of Atahara and Bashuda. The nice thing about the Tenny engine is you can actually go off into one of the uh, most broken level nine synchros in the game. That's Chao Fang, which says, while this synchro summon card is on the field, your opponent cannot activate effects of monsters with the same original attribute as the Yang Zing monster used to synchro summon this card. And of course, you guys know that we use Baxia to synchro summon the um, Chao Fang, which means that your opponent is not going to be able to use any light monster effects, which means that they're cut off from things like Valor and more importantly, Nibiru. So when you do actually open a copy of Ashuna plus any one of these, either Rashuda or Atara, you can do a combo where you go off into the uh, Chao Fang before you use any other cards, before you normal summon, and they are forced into Nibiru while you have Baxia and your Atara on the field. If they do not, you make Chao Fang and then Nibiru no longer occurs. And Chao Fang is actually really, really broken against Voiceless as well because all of their monsters are light. Against Branded, it has some crossover. Uh, there are cards like uh, Sanctifier, I guess, and... Uh, what is that guy's name? Lubelion too, uh, both of them. So there is some mi micro crossover and there is also some niche interactions where you can actually make Chao Fang if your hand is just all gas, make a Baron and then use your Baron to pop the Chao Fang and then you can use the Chao Fang's other effect. Chao Fang's other effect actually says when this Synchro Summon card is destroyed by Battle Card Effect and in the Graveyard, you can add a tuner from your deck to your hand. So you can actually search for something like an Ash Blossom to negate like a Branded Fusion. So you, it has a lot of application. You can search for Veil, you can search for a Ghost Spell. Um, again, we wanted to open multiple cards and i felt ghost spell is just the sixth best hand trap in my opinion because it's so decent against voiceless it's very very powerful it's okay against the uh, snake eyes generally you want to hit the wanted just because you get like the one for one trade out of the way and hope that they just can't play uh but the card is still somewhat relevant i think it's good another argument could be to actually main deck the beast deals but there is some clash uh when you do main deck the beast deals with the actual tannies because you're not able to summon them out so the side deck theory with this is going second, I just side out all of the bis uh, the tenies and actually put in the three shifter and the three bis deals and potentially the two phantasma as well, taking out the blackout. Now shifter is a little bit of a controversial card because it obviously does conflict with the tenies, which is why I decided, hey, you could probably just take them out, put in the shifters. You have a significantly lower chance, however, of resolving the moye, which is the only issue, but cards like phantasma allow you to kind of dig in your hand and hopefully fix that. And then on top of that, we have cards like desires, which we keep in to still have a good chance of seeing a worm. 
And of course, none of the Sword Souls really care about getting banished. Uh, it's more of the Tandy cards that really matter. You miss the draw of Moe, but that's all right. As long as you're able to discard and summon Long Yong, which you can do even if cards have to be banished, and still set up like a Baron Diffler, then oftentimes that's pretty good. And with the Bistios, you can obviously banish your own Shifter from the Graveyard to special summon them out while your opponent controls a monster. So it's quite nice. So. That's kind of my theory with that so far. Um, I haven't really tested the deck that much, so it's up to you guys to tell me if this is good or not. The other nice thing about I like about this deck is, although it does play into Nibiru, which is another drawback that we didn't really talk about, you can obviously choose to play around Nibiru by setting up the Blackout instead of going for Long Yon. So let's say we open Moye and we summon out like a Chishao. We don't have to search for like a Long Yon and try to go into five summons in the Nib. You can just search for the Blackout, set the Blackout, have a grip full of like hand traps, and a lot of times that's just enough, right? So. That's another cool thing about this deck. It does struggle a little bit from having lack of follow-up. That's one thing that I noticed with the deck. It just sometimes you don't have any follow-up because it doesn't have any one-card starters or extenders besides Taya. So that's just one drawback of the deck. Uh, definitely controlling your tennies and make sure you banish stuff and add it back with the uh, Atara so you do have some follow-up in case they actually clear your board is important. Yeah, this deck is only under $150, which is really, really nice and probably pick them up as a bargain off of your local Facebook group even further. And uh, you can actually make some tweaks with this deck if you want in the extra deck. There are things, if you have a bit more budget, you can play obviously SP Little Knight, which is really, really nice with the Tenyes to go into Monk and then just go off into SP, start banishing things. Other things you can play is potentially Typhon. This card is very, very powerful as well. So I could see maybe cutting a Monk, maybe cutting uh, another card from here, a Baxia, for example, and putting in the Sky Crisis. Uh, these are just cards that help break your opponent's board, but obviously they are a little bit heftier on the price side. The rest of the cards I think are very, very accessible. All these cards have been reprinted. Uh, Summon Limit, I think this card is very, very good in the side deck as well, as opposed to Anti Spell. There could be an argument to play Anti Spell, but I feel like Summon Limit is just a little bit better against Snake Eyes. But then there is the one thing is if your opponent hand traps you and you don't have a board, you're kind of locked into your own Summon Limit, so that could be a pain. So I could definitely see Anti Spell Fragrance being a potential alternative uh, just gotta test it a little more i haven't really tested especially with the low spell count honestly we could probably just jam anti-spell and might be a little bit better than some limit considering the amount of hand traps in the format but guys give that a test and let me know how it goes so again guys let's say you open like a 10e spirit vishuda and an ashina all you have to do is reveal the ashina special summon it out uh use the link summon into monk effect of the Vishuda here is really important not to do the Ashuna before the Vishuda because you have to special summon it while you control no effect monsters. And if you banish to summon out Adara, he's an effect monster, so we would not be able to use the uh, Vishuda in the hand. So make sure you do sequence that properly. You're going to synchro off into the Baxia. Baxia's effect allows you to target a monster you control and a card in your graveyard. Destroy the first one, special summon back the other one that's level 4 or lower. Then from here, they have to Nibiru, or else we just go into Chao Fang, which shuts off the Nibiru because your opponent cannot use light monsters because that's the attribute of the uh, Baxia Yang Zing card that we use to synchro summon them, right? So the other nice thing about this is against Voiceless, it shuts off a lot of their cards. So against like Low as well as against Valor. So these are just some uh, things to uh, be aware of, I guess, in the format. Let's say that we have a handful of gas. Uh, obviously, we just demonstrated that combo. So you can definitely do this first and it plays completely well into nib because they have to nib before we invested our normal summon or our long yon extender right so let's say we got to chow fang well that's easy now from here we can just reveal for moye and start going off to the races now the chain links for Chi Xiao and Moye are really important that you sequence this properly. A lot of people were doing the Chi Xiao first and then the Moye second to protect it from something like a Ghost Ogre or a Gamma in the past. But now you have to really think and think about the odds of you actually drawing a non-engine card. So here, the reason why I decided to draw off the Moye before the Chi Xiao is they have a higher chance of actually drawing into the Sword Soul Blackout, right? Because uh, if we draw into either a Worm or Blackout, then we can use the Chi Shout to search whichever we're missing, and that just guarantees that we have a disruption in the form of Blackout, whereas if we actually used the effect of Moye first and Chi Shao to search something like uh, Discard for Long Yon, then that means that Moye's uh, effect might draw in a hand trap or might not draw in a hand trap, but we would rather have that guaranteed disruption in the form of blackout, right? So here we actually drew the blackout, which is just perfect that we chain link that sequence, uh, right? We had a higher chance to see blackout. And now from here, we can use long gun and guarantee that we have the blackout instead of a potential random card, right? So uh, yeah, maybe, maybe better search for emergency or just to have uh, more resources in the deck. 
And then from here, you can just make a changing. Obviously, we are locked into the worms, so that's one thing to be aware of with Ashina, but this board is very, very powerful. We have a Chi Shao Negate. We have the Chao Feng shutting off light monsters, which could be impactful. We have the Chen Ying, and then, of course, we have the Blackout as well that can be paired with the Chen Ying to start banishing stuff. Uh, so really, really cool options there, guys. Um, yeah, what do you guys think about the deck? Let me know. I, I think it's completely budget. I checked all the cards in the TCG player. If you guys think there are any adjustments we can make to make this deck even better, let me know in the comments below. Uh, subscribe and smash that like button. Other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Bye-bye.